to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. And I mean it. I didn't really mean it last week. I think we mean it today. Oh, I mean it. I like this. I like this game. It's a fun game. Yeah. Welcome in. Rico Daddles breakout. Oh, gosh. (laughs) Do do, do we have to start the show like that? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Look, if he doesn't break out tonight... Then, the, then next week will be the Rick Dunn break. Will and I see what not, you're saying. Then it will not happen. <laughs> I wish I had a button that when Mike says Rico Dowdle's name and I push it, a stranger walks in and wheels him out. Like wheels right. Mike right out of the studio. Yeah. Into like my honor of after the Rico well, Dowdle breakout? Over to the ring of honor where you reside. Yeah. Over to the room where you wait for the breakout. And yeah, you wait you in the room <laughs> yes. until that happens. And you can come right out when it happens. Oh, you will have we'll have like a robe in that room, like a king's robe. Yeah. And you could come out you looking real good. Or, or we'll see you in week eighteen. Uh when you when you're allowed to leave after it didn't happen. All right. No food. No food in the room. Uh welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Thursday, September twenty sixth. Thank you for joining us. We got lots of matchups today. We've got the parlay parte. We've got news to talk about, starts of the week. And um Yeah, I'm here. How you doing? Uh, I'm I'm doing fantastic. Your voice sounds a little better. Yeah, I'm, I I think it's I think it's slightly improving. Yeah, that's great. You look a little worse, but that's age. Oh, um, okay. You did right. age a lot since you're, yesterday. You're the oldest I've ever seen you. Yeah, that's true. Uh we we are I'm ashamed of that. That's <laughs> that's that's, that's, that's the one. That's the one. That I'm is ashamed. the joke that, that is, you're ashamed that of. That is absolutely it, that the is joke the I'm highest level of dad. No, joke. that's like grandpoppy, and that's why I'm ashamed. It reminded me though of the you've been Mitch, busted for years, bro. The the the, <laughs> the the Mitch Hedberg joke of when it's like someone hands you a photo, is like, hey, this is a photo of me when I was younger, and he's like, well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> every photo of you when you're younger. It's fair. That's fair. I. Uh, <laughs> How we let's go to the deucers. How we doing, Al? I'm doing great. You doing? Oh, in the black today? Yeah. M- okay. Made a change for today. Good. Good. Uh, Papa Josh still bald, and uh, the Falcons still constipated. Um, into the news we go. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. Not every show makes their production staff feel so loved. But we do. <laughs> but we do. Uh, the commanders have ruled out Austin Eckler already for Sunday's game against Arizona due to a yeah. concussion. He was playing really well, and he was helping this offense that uh, forgot how to punt. Yeah, I mean, honestly, they, uh, every time he's touched the ball this season, I thought, man, this is Eckler two years ago. If they if they had chosen to just make him a, a workhorse, I think he would have been great for fantasy. Unfortunately slash fortunately, Brian Robinson has looked – Equally very good. Like they they have two quality backs. I think that is helping Jaden Daniels quite a bit. Uh yeah, I'm worried about like I, I love Brian Robinson this week in, in that role. The the offense does a lot of around the line of scrimmage work. That was a lot of like I went and watched every Jaden Daniels pass again yesterday or last night just to just go through it, you know, see what Cliff Kingsbury is doing in the offense. There were a couple of the like the two incompletions were deep shots to Terry McLaurin that didn't work. Then he completed 21 other passes. A lot of those were screen game to Diami Brown, um, close to the line of scrimmage, Zach Ertz, that type of stuff. So losing Eckler hurts. It hurts. Uh, and then Arizona's run defense has been good so far this year, but Brian Robinson is a start for sure. Alvin Kamara did not practice due to rib and hip injuries. It's a it's Wednesday. Wednesday practice. But yeah. am I remembering – like there was a – was there a play where Kamara – Went down, not not, not yes. like not down, down, but you were yes. oh he got hurt where he kind of got up and looked like he was shaking something yeah. off. Yeah, so it, it, I mean, look, it was he, uh, he I'm played. guessing his rib <laughs> and his hip. <laughs> he played through, but it was when you see it happen, and then a player misses Wednesday. Just pay attention. AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, both didn't practice on Wednesday. They're also missing right tackle Lane Johnson, who's dealing with a concussion. We're previewing the game today. Um. So we'll talk more about that. 
This was unfortunate to see this morning. <laughs> Bad timing. Yeah. Who was my hungry for more yesterday? It was Bucky Irving. Rook, rookie sensation. Well, Bucky Irving did not practice. He was uh he was downgraded. So yesterday was limited. Today downgraded hamstring injury. Now it feels like the odds are against Bucky Irving playing football. Yes. Very so, much. Um I think he'll play again. <laughs> oh my I'm God. back, baby. Swish. <laughs> Tank Dell did not practice. Ribs, hand injury. Pay attention to that one. 49ers, always injured. Uh, Debo Samuel did not practice on Wednesday. We would not expect him this week. George Kittle did return to a limited practice. That is good news for the hamstring injury return. Yeah, we'll see if he uh, takes the T. Higgins approach of you know getting in some full practices here. That's what you want to see before uh, the game. It's uh, the right direction. As long as that approach does not lead to playing and being unproductive for fantasy. Yeah, Which prefer, is also the T. Higgins approach. Yeah. Evan Ingram did not practice on Wednesday. Gabe what? Davis. What did limited. Evan do in that pregame warm-up? I think in the pregame warm-up, he ripped the hamstring off the bone. Like, did he forget the, to warm it up? He didn't do the stretch. You got to stretch, man. Yeah, I thought that's what he was doing. Can you hurt it in a stretch? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you know, never heard yourself stretching? Gabe Davis limited. Trey McBride didn't practice concussion. We've got yeah. a lot of concussions this week we're dealing with. I would expect all of, the, like, especially Devontae Smith and Trey McBride, I'm expecting them to miss this week. That's how I'm approaching this weekend. Justin Herbert did not practice with the ankle sprain. It'll how, come down to the wire probably. It, it will, however. Um, he talked about how there had been mention of him taking this week off, getting the bye week, but that it's not trending that direction. So right now it looks like he's going to play. And then uh, Dave Canal said, running back Jonathan Brooks, after our long discussion yesterday about the Panthers, who were Mike's hungry for more team, he's in the final stages of returning to play. Uh, hey, that's positive news. Again, we have you, we do not know what the what the real timeline will be to turn things over to Jonathan Brooks, but it, at least we're. We're getting positive news because we definitely could have got something here that was like, oh, no, we're, he's going to stay. Uh, he's going to stay out for a few more weeks. When you use that language, do you actually believe they will turn things over to Jonathan Brooks? I, or do you believe, like, are you just saying the majority of the timeshare? The majority of the timeshare. Like, Chuba is is playing very well. I'm just I'm saying he becomes the one and Chuba becomes the two. I, that may not happen this year. Okay. But, Any other news breaking there, Al, that we need to cover, discuss, talk about? Nothing right now. All right. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Starts of the week. All right. It is week four. Yes, week sir. Yep. Four. And we've got our starts of the week on today's show. We'll start with Mike. Let's kick it off at quarterback. At quarterback, CJ Stroud against the Jacksonville Jaguars. It has been... Uh, not the start that you would hope for had you spent that really high pick on Stroud, QB8, 1625. And, in fact, he has scored .1 more fantasy points than Daniel Jones. But this is the week. Texans carry the second-highest team implied total of the week. Stroud and Nico, are they're going to cook the Jaguars. So this is – we're in week four. Maybe you're a little shaky about Stroud. This is the confidence play. I, if I got him, I'm starting him. I love this. I – I went to put him in as my start of the week, and you had him. All right, Jason, who's your quarterback start of the week? Uh, it's Joe Burrow against Carolina in Carolina. I had mentioned before that I wanted to wait until Joe Burrow had his big, like, I'm ready, I'm healthy, the, the, you know we're going to pass a lot game, and then I'm going to start him going forward. He had it last week, um, and we've seen this before with Burrow, right? He starts slow, yeah, offense sputters, and then they just let him rip. Uh, the Bengals are number one in pass rate over expectation across the league. He's coming off of 324 and three when he was the quarterback three on the week. Um, and this is, you know, this is the second highest total of the week, this matchup. Through three weeks, Carolina ranks 29th in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. Joe Burrow's a must start. I'm going with Kyler Murray against Washington at home. He's my number one ranked quarterback on the entire week. The Cardinals have the highest implied point total of the week against Washington the team that Joe Burrow got going against last week. They are um, a pushover on defense, and so I think you have a number one overall week 
from Kyler Murray. At running back, I'm going to roundhouse the Thursday night curse in the face. We're just rolling with it. Devin Singletary tonight against Ooh. the oh, Dallas Cowboys. We, we often talk about, uh, at least off the show, of like, man, a start of the week on a Thursday is... Risky business. It can be very risky business, but I I love Devin Singletary tonight. You ain't scared. No, I am, I am not. I will not be attending church <laughs> to get that scared away. Look, Dallas is... They're a run funnel, and Devin Singletary is... Uh, he's a workhorse running back right now. RB10 this past week against Cleveland. RB19 against Washington. A late-round pick who is coming through for you. And, uh, look, highest yards per carry allowed. That's the that's the Dallas Cowboys. Who yeah, it, you know, I wonder if this uh, – Dallas needs to wake up. We know that. So, Devin Singletary tonight for Mike. Jason? Uh, for me, I'm going with the aforementioned Brian Robinson Jr. He has looked so good on the season. The, the Arizona Cardinals, you might think about them last year and say, oh, it's just a, a, a gimme matchup. Schedule adjusted, they've been pretty good. They're top five against, you know, in fantasy points given up to the running back position. However, they lost an important defensive lineman this last week, and Brian Robinson has all the work to himself with Austin Eckler out. He's averaging a career-best 5.2 yards uh, per touch right now, and his role inside the red zone is as good as it gets. He has eight carries inside the 10 through three weeks. That's the second most in the NFL. Right now, he has as many double-digit fantasy games as Jameer Gibbs since the beginning of 2023 and I never thought I'd say this guy's name in this segment yeah, I've kind of made it my life goal not to but the opponent he is playing has given up 121 rushing attempts which is the most of any team since 2013 through the first three games is Najee Harris of the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Colts I brought him up on the ready to roll segment he has touched the football on 33 percent of Pittsburgh's plays we know the recipe and the recipe this week is probably some short fields, thanks to Anthony Richardson. Najee Harris primed without Jalen Warren, or very likely with a limited or no Jalen Warren. I think Najee Harris is a just must play that's going to get 20 touches. So now I'm going to combo with Jason's quarterback start of the week. T. Higgins at the wide receiver position against Carolina. If you got him, this is we're starting him. It's the second highest, like Jay said, second highest over under the week. The Bengals are favored by four. In the first game back, we didn't see the, the total production, but 90% of the snaps. He's back. To, he's a full-time player. He is a good player. I don't think it is a – look, Washington certainly helped, but I don't think it is a uh, a strange thing that Joe Burrow and the offense really got it together once they were at full strength. So if I got T – look, the Panthers have allowed five touchdowns to wide receivers in three weeks, and this game, this is uh, this is the game I am excited, most excited for for this entire weekend, and that's a wild thing to to it's a wild place to be. Yeah, I mean, last week Burrow just barely missed him on a touchdown. He, yes. he was open in the end zone, found him, targeted him, but he overthrew him and he had to come down with it out of bounds. Uh, my start of the week is Deontay Johnson, baby. Yeah. He's back. He's got a quarterback that can get him the ball in Andy Dalton. Thirty eight percent of his team's targets last week, targeted on forty percent of his routes, and. The Canales, Canales came in, and he talked about, like, Deontay's our one. We're going to scheme plays for him. He is our first read. He literally said that. And then his 13 first read targets last week were second only to Rushy Rice in week three. So he is the X receiver for this team. He's the first read. I expect him to be peppered by the red rifle. He's a wide receiver, too, now. All right, I'm going to go with a combo platter, actually, at wide receiver, and they're both Chicago Bears. DJ oh, Moore man. and Roma Dunze against the Rams. Uh, we talked about DJ Moore in the trade away candidate yes, segment. I did. Mike brought him up yesterday, but the target counts. DJ Moore is tied for fourth right now in the NFL, eight, ten, ten, and I'm adding Adunze to the mix here. Adunze is fifth in separation score. He looked very good despite recovering from the MCL injury. The Rams secondary is probably the worst in the National Football League, and you saw Caleb Williams. It didn't matter what the the, the turner turnover worthy plays were. He takes shots down the field, and the Rams have given up the second most fancy points to opposing wide receivers through three weeks, the highest yards per pass attempt. We saw Caleb connect down the field, and I think that these targets and then the connection he has with Roma Dunze leads to this week being a very good game for both. Okay, so what does that mean for Caleb Williams, in your opinion? Is that a, is he? A, I mean, if, if both of these wide receivers are going to be good, is Caleb Williams a startable fantasy streamer this week? I think he could be a sneaky stream that nobody really needs to take the chance on. 
I agree okay, with that. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, like like, like G- why why do it? Like why Gino. Do that? Yeah, like so maybe pick him up off of waivers, wait for him to have maybe a good game, and then trade him to someone who believes. Maybe. There you go. Yeah, trade him to the Bears fan. Uh, my tight end start of the week. Look, we're back into the mucky buck, everybody. Steel underpants. I don't know if Andy's head shaking. I, ha- I love this start. I, oh. I, I don't think you need underpants at all. I think this is the no underpants start of the week. <laughs> I this. I'm protecting say myself. Say the name. It is Tyler Conklin of the New York Jets. He Tyler Conklin is going to be great. Conk, conk, baby. He's taking on the Denver Broncos. The, this is not just chasing last week's production. Of, that certainly helps for a confidence boost when you go five for 93 against New England, but they're playing against Denver. I'm still starting Garrett Wilson, probably, but I'm I'm very nervous about the Patrick Sertan experience. Uh Conklin is on the field so much. He's run the third most routes at the tight end position. It just finally came through. The process finally hit last week. And then last year, Denver was dead last against tight end posi- the tight end position of fantasy points allowed. Week two, the Muth and Darnell Washington combined for almost 13 points. Kate Auten saw eight targets. Conklin, in, in a world of nastiness at the tight end position, I think Conklin has a safer floor. Conk, conk, baby. Also, <laughs> as a reminder, or if you are new to the show, if you start Tyler yeah, Conklin yeah, these are rules. and you're watching the game, every catch, you throw out a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is this what ha- like, were the people, were we not conking loud enough? I, 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 this is why I'm telling the it's people. It's a chicken egg situation because you can't conk unless he catches. You you're can't conk, right. you can't pre-conk. But when he <laughs> catches, say conk, conk. You will enjoy your game more. And we will be together. And you'll be at you'll be at the uh, you'll be at the sports bar watching, and you'll hear a conk conk on the other side, and you'll be like, "That is important." I know, I know, <laughs> I know. I know we're together in this. Um, my start of the week: Dalton Kincaid at Baltimore. Um, I, nice. I'm telling you, he's for my going, team. It's <laughs> I hate that you have him because he's going to have a very good game. It's been oh. a slow burn, a slow burn for all the tight ends, especially for Kincaid. Uh, he did get in the end zone uh, on Monday Night Football, but here's been the common thing: three for forty-one and a score. Good enough for a tight end five on the week. <laughs> Monster game. Um, you know, he's been the Just clear. give me a competitive game for Buffalo, though. Yes. Yes. One quarter exactly. of football is all that Don Kincaid is getting to play in a normal neutral pass rate. The last two weeks, he's been the clear first read early in the game, and then Buffalo pulls away. Right now, now the Bills go on the road as two-and-a-half-point dogs against Baltimore. This should be a competitive game where they need Dalton Kincaid, and somehow the Ravens have morphed into a pass funnel. They have given up the most passing yards allowed in the NFL, and tight ends have been a big part of that. Brock Bowers was 9 for 98 against the Ravens. Last week, Turd Ferguson, that was where he had 11 targets, went 6 for 95. Which is is Jake. Jake Jake Ferguson. Jake Turd Ferguson. Um, That's not an insult. It's just a good name. It's It's a funny hat. It's a funny hat. It's a big hat. Uh, So I, I do think Dalton Kincaid is needed in this game. Uh, the scheme fits him, and he'll have a great week. That's good. My start of the week is Turd Ferguson <laughs> yes. against the New York Giants. Jake Ferguson brought up yesterday as a trade for candidate. He gets peppered with targets. He's the only reliable um, every down pass catcher for this team outside of C.D. Lamb. They rotate through Tolbert and Cooks and Turpin and other options, but Jake Ferguson's out there all the time, and um, – yeah, you know, to me, this is just a uh, a must have tight end start this week against the Giants, which is an island, oh, an island we, game as we well. We are riding dirty, so we're riding dirty uh, this week. All right, we're gonna take a break and we're gonna jump into the matchups. All right, lots of matchups to jump into. It is week four, and uh, let's get to it. It's time for Fantasy Forecast, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. All right, the New Orleans Saints at 2-1 traveled to Atlanta to take on the Falcons, who are 1-2. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Atlanta, minus 2.5 at home. The over-under is just 42 points. That's not a lot, especially for, uh, you know, the Saints offense that had done quite well through two weeks. And Atlanta, who seems to get it together every third drive, that's how it feels. Like yeah. it feels like Atlanta's turned off for a couple drives, and then they're like, "Oh, you you keep seeing really nice drives every now and then." Yeah. Um, and what's ironic is the only other team I can think of that has looked like that, where you go, "Oh, 
they're awesome, and then and then they disappear for a while. It's the Jets, <laughs> which the Falcons and the Jets. The the similarities between these two teams is crazy. These these quarterbacks that are coming back off of their Achilles injuries, um, Achilles injuries. Uh, so is like, can you you can't singleize Achilleses Achille 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 Right. It's not like a, just an Achilles. It it, which, and it, it's a guy. Yeah, it's named after the guy, right? Yeah. The guy, yeah. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. I mean, you know his name. Right. Yeah, the mythical, the mythical guy. But I think it is actually named after that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. Don't look it up. Uh, well, I, I think what <laughs> happened, yeah, I mean, it was, it, was, it was his heel that got cut. Yes. And therefore, it's Achilles' heel. Exactly. But at that time, it was just his heel. Like, they, they weren't like, let's go get that guy's Achilles' yeah, heel. Right. They're like, let's go get Achilles' heel. Right. You know what I mean? And then it became so famous that everyone, it was, that's yeah. your Achilles' heel. Yeah. Okay, so, Falcons. We uh, did it. <laughs> so, th this is going to be, this is going to be really. Uh, transitioning into <laughs> talking about the game. This is going to be really interesting. You've got a team that for two years in a row so far this season and last year, the Saints were not good against tight end. Kyle Pitts is a big question mark. He had a 50-yard reception last week. The coaches talked about they want to get him more involved, but two for 59, good enough for tight end nine on the week. Are you talking about Pitts? I am talking about Pitts. Yeah, I, I trade him right now. Trade him right now. Oh, man. Before I, this game? I, I trade, him for, trade him for Turd Ferguson. You can get that deal done. I think Kyle Pitts he, has a decent week this week. And if he does and you still don't believe in him, which I probably won't, I think not you get more for him next he's week. He's not separating he's not separating he's not doing what he needs he caught a he had a broken play he had one big broken play that's what so, he did in week one um yes right and i guess if you get it you're good but i mean two catches so talk to me about drake london who tell me he's good i i can tell you that he's good i know he's a good player drake london is is um is all right who's a better player andy jalen waddle or Drake London as an not NFL Andy. player, as in not a, Andy. a fantasy, <laughs> as a fantasy, as, as a like fantasy for the rest asset. of the year, for the rest of their career. Oh gosh, well, Jalen Waddle. You sure? I'm positive. Oh wow. If you said rest of the year, I would, I'd probably tell you Drake London because I don't know what's going on at quarterback in Miami. But Drake London is not going to be the leading receiver every game for the Atlanta Falcons. So that is going to be the risk that you play. Last week in a league, I started Darnell Mooney over Drake London as a choice. I lost the bet because uh, Drake London got into the end zone again. He is definitely going to be the red zone preferred option. Now, the Saints defense in the division, low over under. I don't know how I feel about this game. Like, Do you like the Saints defense in this game going on the road with how dominant it's been, or do you try to avoid that? I, I think they're, they're a middling – play this week they're like a low-end startable defense their their defense is of high quality but I, th I think the Atlanta Falcons offense should be getting better every single week um, now I don't know uh, an update on the offensive line but obviously the the Falcons lost a couple of players I'm going to check on their practice reports it's still a little too early in the week that would that would be the only thing if if they're down those two linemen for this coming week then I would fire up the Saints do you have an answer to that question that's different Drake London and and Jalen Waddle, Mike. Long long term, no. It it, it would be Jalen Waddle for me long term. Okay, so I am definitely trading Jalen Waddle for Drake London in Dynasty now. Wow. Oh, because you're trying to do the opposite. I'm trying to undo uh, your I CD see. Lamb curse. Yeah, go for it. Uh, please, please so, go do that right now. Let's talk about Bijan for a second. I think it's three week. You know, we're three weeks in. Um, his longest run in each of his games: 13, 19, and seven. He has one rushing touchdown on the year. He has caught uh, a handful of passes, but not what we wanted. Yeah, target week one, that's the target share we want, yeah, 22%, down to 17%. That's still – that's great. That's but about 7% uh, against the Chiefs. That that ain't it. I, I guess I'm just bringing it up because there, I've seen a bunch of people get offers uh, for, you know, trade away, trade for B. John Robinson, and, you know – RB19, RB17, RB17. Uh, Tyler Algier has a role on this team. What what's the like where would he get drafted if you drafted it today? Like Bijan? Yeah. Maybe he's, he's still a first round pick. He would be a I think probably a top 5 pick. Yeah. He'd be right around where you drafted him. I agree. So you you've made no 
adjustment to your view of Bijan Robinson's no, potential in this offense? No, I haven't. I mean, he he has been a little disappointing as far as high output. Obviously, he's been 13, 14, 12. Yeah, those those are the fantasy points per game and a half PPR, and that is a that seems like a floor. And that's an awesome floor if you're talking about, you know, essentially averaging 13 points as your floor. The offense hasn't gotten it together, but his utilization has just been so awesome. You're talking about 89, 75, 82% of snaps, 86, 61, 70% of running back opportunities, 100, 83, and 100% of running back reception. So uh, the talent is there. The, oppor the, the, the opportunity is there. I'm fully in on it. Would Major. you take him or would you take Alvin Kamara? That, that's Alvin Kamara's, you know, right now, he was the running back 6-1 and 15. His attempts have been through the roof. I mm -hmm. mean, they ran it 26 times last week, 20 the week before with Kamara. Um, I think it's that, not even been a story of targets. It's been a story of, of just massive opportunities. Kamara is still somehow criminally undervalued. I'm happy to hear you put him in the conversation with Bijan. He deserves to be there. He was the running back four on a per-game basis once he was back from suspension last season. He's in that conversation. If I were to redraft today, I would still take the youth um, of yeah, Bijan over the age, just from an injury fear. You know, I mean, right now you've got Kamara missing practice, so can he hold up for the entire season? I mean, he, he usually does, but he also doesn't usually get the work he's getting right now. The the auxiliary wide receivers here are Andy. Are you going right back to Shahid? He, like the, it, the, the a, shots were there. Like Darren, yeah, I mean, it, Shahid is he, he was never going to be a must start guy, even with those performances. He was going to be a flex play. Okay, so Shahid or Calvin Ridley, you know that that's right. the category of decision making you're in right now. Shahid or Darnell Mooney on the other side. That's what I was, I was you know, a, Mooney's I was, at home. Mooney Mooney's line right now is thirty nine and a half receiving yards. Like, I think that's, I think that's borderline disrespectful. Well, the Saints are a good defense. The over-under is very low. There are a lot of decisions to be made in this matchup. And we talked about Pitts. That seems like a decision. The quarterbacks, I think we're probably sitting both quarterbacks down Preferably. in this game. But Kamara and Bijan are locks. But Shahid, Mooney, I, those both, peripheral yeah. flexible guys. I'm, I'm fine flexing. Olave and London, are are they locks for your lineup? Is London yeah, a lock? Are. Yeah, he is. Yeah, it was nice to see. I mean, I know it was a garbage time touchdown the week before, but it was nice to see London score again last week. Um, is London in the just hold category right now? He is for me. What do you, you mean as a not trade? You're not saying – I mean, he's starting. I think he meant like are you going to try and – would you try and trade him off these two weeks? Oh, would no. You bail I, out? I think the Falcons are just – they're they're going to heat up. I, I His 24% target share is what I thought he would have when he – you know, when I statted him out for the UDK, he ended up as my tight end – or my wide receiver 11, I think. And that was with a 24% market share. So I'm, I'm going to hold. The Los Angeles Rams at 1-2 and two take on the 1-2 and two Chicago Bears. We just talked about this game in the context of a couple wide receivers in the start of the week. Chicago, three-point home favorites. Over-under is 41. And so here we go. It's been reported uh, early this morning that the – Bears are going to give an extended look to Roshan Johnson, which they should, yes. because any extended look at DeAndre Swift will leave you <laughs> vomiting in the toilet. This, this is why we Roshan was a waiver ad. There were some clips going around um, <laughs> oh, yeah, there were. highlighting DeAndre Swift's <laughs> choices as a runner. Another word might be ineptitude. I mean, you're, you, you, were, you were pretty kind with your words about DeAndre Swift earlier this week. Was I? Yeah, I think you said he's the worst player uh, that's ever. Maybe uh, the worst in the history of the National Football League. Right. Oh, man. I mean, just, yeah. It, they he's, need to, he's hurting their offense. Like, if I'm a Bears yes, fan, I'm yes. like, stop giving him the ball. If you want to make DeAndre Swift some sort of uh, screen game pass catcher on third down. That's fine. And give first yeah. and second to Roshan, although he can catch the football as well and is much bigger than you, DeAndre. Um, I've got a great idea. Okay. First and second down, Khalil Herbert third down Roshan, and you re-roll what was just fine last year. Yeah. it's uh, It would be better than what we're getting with Swift. So that makes Swift a bench for all three of us. His, his line is at 38 and a half rushing yards. That is not optimism, and that matches everything I feel about him right now. DJ Moore and Roma Dunze. Now, I brought them up. They're my starts of the week. The secondary for the Rams is atrocious. The Bears are at home. Their implied point total is 22. I like them, but 
No, it, it all I don't makes know if sense. you guys liked him. No, look, DJ Moore as a trade away, maybe you want to hold. Maybe you want to hold through this weekend because it, uh, it everything makes sense for him to have a good game. The and a Dunze as well. So I, I don't mind that call at all. The thing about DJ Moore is, though, if he goes out and has a bad game in this matchup, like the, the value plummets. plummets. And Keenan Allen returned to a limited practice. It's limited on Wednesday. If he is full go by the time Sunday hits, I mean, it's he Keenan Allen in week one was, was a target machine, if I'm remembering it right. He was 11 targets. He was 38% of the targets against Tennessee. Now, it, yeah, that's Caleb Williams' first ever game. But Keenan Allen is exactly the type of wide receiver that Caleb Williams should love throwing the well, ball to. Well, let's talk about where Keenan might impact as well because Cole Komet was a waiver wire pickup. He had a ton of targets. That is a concern for me. Like, Would yes. you go Cole Komet this week knowing that Keenan's probably limited or out over a Kyle Pitts, or would you play Kyle Pitts? I would play Kyle Pitts. Yeah, I'd stick with Pitts. On the other side of the ball, predictability at wide receiver has been brutal. Um, the answer has been no one. The answer in this game, if you if you like, made me pick Demarcus or Tyler Johnson or Jordan Whittington or Tutu, I would pick Tutu. That's who I would pick to start if I had to flex a right a wide receiver from this team. Tyler Johnson's done nothing, and De uh, Demarcus Robinson has done nothing. I mean, Demarcus Robinson, uh, one catch. Last week, two the week before, like Tutu seems like when he's on the field, he does have something with Matthew Stafford that is a little like it was four for ninety three. Well, what's funny is that he is this schemed up guy. Like Tutu is not in as often, but when he's in, he's in motion. He's targeted on those plays where he's in motion, and they're getting him down the field. I think that you are fine to take a shot on Tutu if you want. Um, I, I also think Demarcus Robinson is an okay play as well. Um, obviously, the four targets he only came down with one of them. However, he had a deep bomb touch or not touchdown. It was it was uh, like a forty something yarder that he well, it was called to catch at first, and then they saw he was out of bounds slightly. And so um, he's on the field so much, he's running so many routes. So I'm fine taking the shot there. I mean that there's there's not a ton of wide receivers out there that are doing that. Mooney or Demarcus Robinson? Mooney, Mooney, Kyron Williams. Yep, I, I think you should probably play him. Yep. Um, and pay attention to Roshan. See what he does in this game. All right, Minnesota's three and zero. They go to Green Bay to take on the two and one Packers. The DK Sportsbook line: Green Bay minus three at home. The over under is forty three and a half. We excited for this game? Yeah, this will be the this will be my game of the week if it were not for uh, the the gift that the Carolina Panthers and Andy Dalton have given me. So the Packers at home here. What's the latest on Jordan Love? And you know. Are we expecting him to be back? He's it's still limited. Um I I'm guessing he will be back. Uh, the 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 play of Malik Willis though, it, it's given them at least the opportunity that maybe they think hey we're at home despite it being this divisional matchup that is this is like this is a very important game for the Green Bay Packers of if you fall to 2 and 2 and lose a division game and Minnesota's at 4 and 0 oh, like it that creates a problem of of trying to catch up. So I, I, I think that Jordan Love is going to push to play. There are a lot of people that want to take the plunge, start Sam Darnold after the four-touchdown game. You know, I have a super flex league. I'm going to start him over Anthony Richardson against Pittsburgh. I, I don't blame you. Uh, are, we, are we in for a pumpkining, or are we going to continue to see Sam Darnold execute this offense at this level? Aaron Jones, Justin Jefferson, maybe Jordan Addison back on the field. Uh, are are you guys confident with him on the road in in Lambeau? Because I'm nervous. I am. I think I'm more confident than Jason is. Now the Sam Darnold's touchdown rate is, uh, it's astronomical. It's at ten point three percent. And for a reminder, like the baseline around the the league for a touchdown percent, which is how many of your attempts actually turn into a touchdown, it's about four and a half percent. Elite players can be up in the high fives. Uh, maybe low sixes, so that will that will come back down to earth. Aaron Jones will start getting rushing touchdowns. That will happen, but I believe in this offense so much. It's the same way that I like. Generally speaking, you believe in Sean McVay's offenses a, as well. So maybe you know someone like if you're streaming 
maybe go to like Geno over Sam Darnold, but I added Darnold in the league of record. I have Jordan Love as my main quarterback. Uh, I'm preparing to play Jordan Love in this matchup, but I think long term, that why I picked up Darnold. Uh, Brock Purdy was available, and I said no, I want Darnold on the team because I want to see if this is is something that can continue. Because I think not this, not a 10 percent touchdown rate, but I think that Darnold is can become one of those surprise quarterbacks that finishes in the top eight who no one had ranked anywhere near that. To be fair, when I saw that you picked him up over Brock Purdy, I was like, what is Mike doing? So I, I think we disagree here. Obviously, I um, I have st I still just hesitate to believe that this is just going to be real and hold forever with Darnold. He's been great. I don't want to take anything away from him, and I love that you're willing to take the shot and say, hey, um, I, I think it is legit. I think, you know, he's got the right coaching staff. You know, you talked about Geno as maybe a, a play over him, but Geno is the comp of, like, we've seen a player – who was left for dead, resurrect his career. Yes. And, and maybe that is what Darnold gets to do um, this season. So I, I'm out. Andy, t what's the tiebreaker there? Are you, do you believe in Darnold the rest of the season? Do you think it's going to hold up and be legit? Not not like top five, but like, do you think he's going to be a, a, a number one? No. But I mean, a stream-worthy starter regularly, the way we view Purdy. I mean, Purdy hit a waiver wire this past week. So I, I, I think Sam viewing Darnold him or Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes, I think I think if if you compare him to Purdy, that's the best example that you can give. Now, Josh Jacobs was disappointing last week. You're you're with a different quarterback. He's not getting any targets in this offense with Malik Willis. They also split. I think yeah. that, that was the bigger thing for Josh Jacobs. He, not that he was bad, but Emmanuel Wilson came in forty one percent of the snaps, forty one percent of the running back attempts, and looked very good. I mean, it didn't bother me. Tennessee looked inept on offense, like giving Jacobs opportunities to come off the field and then having Emmanuel Wilson break off a big touchdown certainly hurt Jacobs. But his his rushing line's at 57 and a half. Uh, I'm comfortable with Jacobs. Jaden Reed, Christian Watson and company. You know, Reed is the only player I'm willing to start there. I know, I know you guys talked about picking up some of these. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Wait. Ooh. Oh. I have undone Butter. the curse. You have mm. undone the curse? Yeah. I've been over here working my magic. Screw you two guys. Did you trade, did you trade Jalen Waddle? I traded Jalen <laughs> Waddle for Drake London. I did it because you guys told me not to do it. You guys convinced me to trade CD Lamb for Jalen Waddle years ago, and that ruined me. I just got a superstar, and I know it because you two guys cursed me, and I undid it. That's right, baby. You traded Jalen just a one for one? I added Pat Fryermuth. See you later, sucker. I got to go get my superstar. I now oh believe in Drake gosh. London. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. If you drink one bottle of poison, the answer is not to drink a second oh bottle, man. Jason. This is great. Poison? Don't drink a second bottle of poison to make the first bottle go away. Oh, oh I love it. Oh, I broke that curse. Here? Thank you, fellas. Yo, it's Jason great. Has been great news. Jason has been typing <laughs> through the last two matchups. <laughs> And I didn't know if something we're, was happening. We're working, Jason. I thought something was happening. I was working, I too. honestly thought something was happening at home. Yeah. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> when will Jason come back to the show? Yeah. No, I'm back, baby. I'm back, and I'm hyped. So thank you, fellas. Anyways, what were we talking about in the so context? So you asked the question earlier, who's better for the rest of the career? To get the 100%, answer from us I was so and hoping, to do the opposite. Uh, exactly right. Exactly right. I was so hoping that you guys concurred, and you both – were definitive that Waddle is better rest of career than Drake London. Thank you, thank you for that. So the two, you know, fantasy football uh, recent champions in that league uh, agreed. Yeah, and you went Drake London. To be fair, I think we are the previous three champions in that league, so we're all good here. Okay, well, back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Jaden Reed. Jaden Reed is yes, unbelievably awesome. Um, he he is on on a per touch basis. He's breaking. Not according to that letter Mike made me read publicly to everybody a long time ago. Yeah, I, I mean I, I didn't make you do nothing. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, any anyone who was anti Jaden Reed, I think you should be quick to take your L. He looks amazing on the field. He looks he's fantastic. he's been great with uh, Malik Willis. He will be better with Love. If you can get him now, I would get him now. Um, he just he's different. You know, you watch him on the field, and every time. When he's got the ball in his hands, you go, oh, that guy's fast. He's he's like lightning out there. 
Pittsburgh's 3 and 0 they take on the 1 and 2 Indianapolis Colts, the DraftKings sportsbook line Pittsburgh minus 1 and a half. Over/unders 40. So we we got three straight games with pretty low over/unders. You've got uh Justin Fields v Anthony Richardson. Richardson is at home, but the matchup is difficult. The pressure, the amount of fantasy points given up to the quarterback position through the year Last year, Steelers only gave up 13.3 fantasy points on average to quarterbacks. This year, they've lowered that to nine and a half. Well, and Anthony Richardson's averaging about nine and a half. Um, let me tell you. We're, so we're doing the uh, parlay parte uh, later on, and I was super close again to switching from my running back receptions to Anthony Richardson over 0 0.5 interceptions because <laughs> that is his current line, and that feels like. I don't see it's how. It's at a half? It's at a half, so does he throw one or not? Yeah, he does. Oh my I mean, gosh. The, I don't know how he doesn't. I like The only way he doesn't is if he just fumbles too many times to have the opportunity to throw a pick. It's been a, uh, it's been a bumpy ride for Anthony Richardson, and when you contrast that to the kind of accuracy and performances you're getting from Jaden Daniels right now, I'm sure F Colts fans are disappointed. We know that Richardson has tremendous p potential, but this week is not the week that we expect to see that potential – manifests into fantasy points. So to me, Richardson is a – He's outside of my top 12. Yeah, oh. he's, he's a bench unless you – unless you can't, right? Yeah, I mean, I uh, so I have him in our league of record. He's my main, you know, quarterback. I still view him as my number one quarterback on the roster, but he is a streaming option for me. So I've got Geno – in my lineup I'd this week Gino. over Anthony Richardson. So if that shows you kind of where that bar is, he's he's pretty much a must sit for me this week. If you can't deal with a very good defense like he couldn't last week, then you cannot deal with the Steelers. Do you know how many points they've given up on the year so far? The Steelers? Yeah. Well, you said I mean, nine give, per game. Yeah, they're giving up times three. No, that it. was for quarterbacks. Fantasy points is what I told you. Oh, But it's going to be pretty close to that. Like 30 points? Yeah, they get 26. <laughs> so if a, I had done the math, I would have got to 27. You should have let me. It just would have been the math based on the wrong <laughs> things. But yeah, um, they don't We are a results over process that's, show. Yes, no. that's right. That's right. <laughs> results over process, everyone. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Number one in points per game. Number one in yards allowed. Um, Indianapolis is the opposite of this. This is why I think Najee can just run it, run it, run it, take Low risk chances with Justin Fields. Um, you know, Jonathan Taylor, his DK rushing line is 73 and a half, and I would be taking the under on it. I get it. I mean, one big play, Jonathan Taylor can erase your expectations, and you're obviously going to play him, but. He's the only Colt that I really want to play. I think that's fair. And then on the other side, Pickens. Um, yeah. Sure. Play yeah. Pickens, play Najee, and then Fields. We would you play Fields or Richardson? I mean, I would I'd play go Fields. fields. I, yeah. would, I would play Fields. The uh, A nasty boy question here for you guys. Nasty. How do you feel? Uh, look, love Najee. No argument. But if Jalen Warren is out, he didn't practice on Wednesday, What if you're in a deeper format, what are your thoughts on Patterson? No, thanks. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, it could work if he gets in the end zone. But otherwise, I, I think it'll just be, you know, five fantasy points. He was... He was higher than that last week, and when it was there, where Warren did get some snaps, thirty-four percent of snaps, nine opportunities, a sixteen percent target share. I think I think Patterson, if you're in a, like a fourteen teamer, is if Warren doesn't play, is he's okay. The Broncos are one and two. They take on the two and one New York Jets. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Jets minus seven and a half at home. The over under is just thirty. Morf. Just thirty nine and a half, which is this gives the Broncos an implied point total the lowest we've seen so far through four weeks. I, I think there's been a handful of teams right at 16. That's what they have on the road in New York. The Jets have an implied point total of 24. Um, this is the, you know, this is the matchup where Bo Nix is going to be really, really put in a box. Yes. Yeah, guys, guys, Javante Williams. Did you look at what the line was, Jay? His oh, I haven't line. seen Don't it. Look it. Oh, Don't look I, at I it. Oh, I want to guess. Javante <laughs> His rushing line? His rushing His line. rushing yardage. <laughs> uh, obviously, it's terrible. Starting running back. 29 and a half? You're a little too high. <laughs> oh, man. I went low. 24 and a half? 28 and a half. Oh, my goodness. Javante. We so, also got word that Tyler Bidet changed his name to Bidet before the game. 
Right, right. He, like, hey, what you're allowed to do. Splish Splash says he's taking a bath. <laughs> he says he's going through some stuff. He doesn't want to get into it, but his name is Bidet now. So <laughs> That makes it sound like the stuff he's going through is some is Falcon related. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to wash that clean with a bidet. Um, also, the name change happened to be good for his career. Dude, Tyler Bidet is a great player. Yeah. Tyler Bidet. Tyler, Tyler Beatty. I don't know. Yeah, Tyler Beatty okay. flush him out. You're saying because, you know, turning over a new leaf. Now, I will say this. So, the when I look at this game, Another I saw the seven and a half point line earlier this week. And it's one of those specific matchups where I understand the line because I don't – the. If you want to beat the Jets, here's how you beat the Jets. And you can beat the Jets easily if you have a good run game and you start strong with a good run game. You just take, you keep the lead and you keep running on them. They don't have a good rush defense. Their pass defense is as good, if not the best in the league. They're eighth against running backs right now. The, sure. For fantasy. Yeah, I, I mean, if you look at the games and how they've played out, that's fine. But I'm just saying, like, uh, personnel-wise and what I expect to be the, the huge. Denver can't run the ball. I don't know why they're so bad at running the ball. Maybe it's just Javante. Maybe the bidet comes in and, and I allows mean, them McLaughlin's to run. I mean, McLaughlin's been worse than Javante on a per-touch basis. Yeah, so... Or it, just as bad. Yeah. If, if you can't get a lead and you can't run the ball, which they're not going to be able to do on the Jets. I don't I don't think they're going to be able to run the ball on the Jets. They also won't be able to throw against them. Well, they, that's for sure. I mean, Bo <laughs> Nix is going Last to... Last week was great for him, so I want to give him his flowers, but going on the road here is... I, if you doubled the line, I might take the Jets. I will say this. Bo Nix should be picked up in fantasy for future weeks. If you don't realize how much he's been rushing, his rushing touchdowns, yeah. his rushing touchdowns from college, his speed, like he has Nine not. Nine for 47 last week. He has not been given any credit really on, on our show um, and, and from Bo anything Nicks. I've seen much online or elsewhere as a mobile dual threat quarterback. But he actually is a mobile dual threat quarterback. We saw it in college. It, I, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, would that translate or not? Baker kind of was. He ran in college and didn't. Bo Nix is running, and he's running well, and he's running away from defenders. Um, so this isn't the matchup for it, but I do think he has decent fantasy output this year. If you look uh, beneath the shadow of Patrick Sertan, you'll find Garrett Wilson lingering yeah. there. This matchup is not a good it's one. It's going to be tough. If you look historically, the last three weeks, Mike Evans, George Pickens, DK Metcalf, the yardage numbers against Patrick Sertan were low. Yeah, the the couple plays that Wilson doesn't have Sertan on him, hopefully that's when Rodgers finds him. Yeah, and it's been, you know, Rodgers has been willing the last few weeks to go away from Wilson based on coverage. So, Lazard, dart throw. He's, he's um, scoring a touchdown. I actually think he'll probably be okay in this game. And then Tyler Conklin, that's why I like him, is because of the Sertan treatment on Garrett Wilson. Do you guys think, like – I'm trying to think about this Denver Broncos situation because Javante is is it's toast. Jaleel McLaughlin is not working. Uh, are you? Would you do a preliminary ad of Audric Estime? Not no, yet. because I don't think that the this backfield is never going to be one person. This backfield's they're not going to say like we're just done with you to J Javante this season. So I I don't think any one player can accumulate enough stats i think it's going to be three to four guys so when estimate comes back it just it's even worse for everybody yeah, I, yeah. I just think it's worse I, I just don't think you're ever gonna we're gonna be where we were last year where you just couldn't predictably start any player and the back i mean we're just re-rolling it's the inverse of historical sean payton where you could start multiple backfield guys in a successful offense now you got a rookie quarterback and a, and a struggling run game and too many options like did you know Taylor Bidet or um, Tyler Bidet was going to get opportunity last week? Because I didn't. The answer wasn't to give it to McLaughlin a bunch of times. So I mean, we didn't even know who Bidet was. It was that's true. They had a guy Beatty that I yeah. knew. About. Right, I knew, I knew, I knew that guy. Um, going back to Cordero Patterson as like if you're in a deep league and you need a backup, I feel like in this game I'd rather play Braylon Allen. I don't think he's someone okay. that I'm trying to put into lineups, but you could see this game getting out of control and Braylon Allen having the entire fourth quarter to Clean himself and cleaning up. Um, and obviously he's talented. He he has been worked in with Brees Hall starting in the first quarter. So he'll get he'll get some work in this game, and obviously Brees is going to crush. All right, let's take a break and get back into some more matchups. Would you take Bijan or Brees rest of season? Brees. 
The Philadelphia Eagles, 2-1, and one, taking on the 2-1 and one Tampa Bay Buccaneers after their disappointing performance last week. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Philly on the road, minus two. The over-under is 44 points. Uh, Tampa, if you remember, spanked the Eagles in the NFC wildcard game last year, 32-9. to nine. Baker threw for 337-3, and three, and uh, Hurts didn't run the football much. This year... What are we expecting in this game? I mean, we got the word on, I, I mentioned it earlier, Bucky Irving missed practice. <laughs> We've got an update that Bucky Irving won't talk about the hamstring injury, but he says he thinks he'll be ready for Sunday. So we don't know what's going well, he on. He said he feels pretty great. Uh, T. Higgins pretty great or like, like Guys, normal, I don't know. Like a normal person ready. That is, I mean, either way, I'm probably avoiding Bucky. Well, the, uh, you know, the Eagles are top half against running backs. Fancy points given up. They were top six last year. So a split backfield with Rashad White and Buck Irving doesn't seem like a great place to target. Now White in the passing game could obviously provide the if you listen to Todd Bowles, the two press conferences he's given yep. since that game, he's been pretty definitive about the fact that one, Buck Irving's earned more snaps, but two, Buck Irving cannot win the job. I mean, that's kind of his right. language, is that it's like it's gonna be both those guys, you know, they need them both. And this is not about Bucky Irving winning the running back position. So Rashad White in this game, his rushing line is only 36 and a half, but the passing game work, where are you fantasy-wise with what Rashad White is to your lineup? Is he still an auto start to you? Because that's what he was drafted to be. I think he is near that. He's just, you know, an auto start doesn't mean that you are a running back one. Um, I, I view him as an RB2, maybe even an RB3, but that is in most leagues going to be started regardless of the matchup. When you add in Bucky Irving's hamstring issue or non-issue, uh, I, I think Rashad White is fine because of his work in the passing game this week. Mike Evans, uh, it looks good for him in this game. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, I think, assuming they're out there, they were both limited on Wednesday. I think they're both fine. Mm -hmm. If they're both out there, you're playing both of them, right? With confidence? Yes, correct. With confidence. Yeah. And then on the other side of the football, what do you? where, where does Jalen Hurst throw it? Like, I... You know, I, I'm probably not going to hit the almost upset button on this game, but I could definitely see the Eagles offense struggling to move the football uh, because of the fact that they may not have their top two wide receivers. And the numbers that Jalen Hurts puts up without those guys, they're not good. I talked about Dallas Goddard yesterday. Now, the the, the tight end position so far through three games, if you adjust for the schedule, um, Tampa Bay is better against tight ends this season than they were last season when they were historically bad. So maybe they have fix that but it's still pretty early they're going to need Dallas Goddard in this game I don't know you know like I'm not confident in Dallas Goddard you're certainly going to start him I mean he's he's got the matchup and the opportunity he's coming off of a great performance where you you pretty much have to the the process says to start him but he has disappointed people many many times in the past well Hertz Barkley and and Goddard seem like the three stars are you playing Obviously, you're playing Devontae Smith or A.J. Brown if they were back. Obviously, yes, you if know. they're active. But we're not expecting them back? We're not expecting them back. It, later in the week, we'll have more information. Um, you know, I, I would think Devontae Smith has a chance because concussions are just out of the player's control, out of our control. You can just be cleared, and then you're ready to go. You're not, you know, recovering, and you're just – you are good. So, either one, if they're active, you're going to start. And also, if you – Breaking news, huh? I just, I just thought you guys would want to you know. trade for Jalen Waddle. No, no. Oh. Um, I thought you might might want to know that uh, the Lions have activated a wide receiver to the team's starting roster. Fireball? No. Allen Robinson. Oh what? My gosh. Allen Robinson has been activated to the active roster for the what? Detroit Lions. Hey. Still playing football. I didn't know he was on the Lions until just now. Um, This is great What news. are they doing? Oh, I know what they're doing. They're getting ready to run the ball. <laughs> I mean, Allen Robinson played so what? many snaps last what? year for the Steelers. You have no – you can't even believe how often he was out there because he was, he was an offensive lineman out wide. He's just there to block other wide receivers – while we run to the edge. So it's actually probably good news for Gibbs. Crazy, like, huh? Yeah, it's insane. I didn't know he was Sorry, on the line. Sorry, that, that, that was special well, breaking good. news just that's for this news. show. 
Um, you were probably saying some things about some of the players. I, I was just going to say, so I've got Dallas Goddard in three of my main leagues. It has worked out very well over the last uh, couple of weeks. He was my pickup for injuries in those leagues. I took a shotgun approach across three leagues, and I took Dallas Goddard, and I traded him for the top five tight ends, you know, the ones you want. The the. the so did you? You fired out 15 trades? I tried, fired out 15 trades across three different leagues, and I got one of them to go through. I was able to trade Dallas Goddard for Mark Andrews. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't work out. Maybe it does. I got Dallas Goddard off of the waivers, and now I added Mark Andrews to my team. So if you've got Dallas Goddard, if you're one of those lucky teams, just if there's guys you would rather have, shotgun it because you never know, baby. <laughs> the frivolity of your trading. <laughs> uh, unseen from you in history. All right. Uh, I think that covers this matchup. Yeah, it does. Well, no. The one other what? question is Baker. Oh. Uh, like, would you start Baker – over Anthony Richardson. Yes. At home, yes. Against well, Philly's have, secondary with Mike Evans and Chris Godwins, I would I would do that. I have Baker ranked a couple spots behind Richardson. I mean, Richardson's downside is so tremendous. Yeah, I mean that it, like when's the last time Baker scored negative? I, mean, I guess uh, last week he was yeah, eight, eight, eight and points. a half. I say Baker was real bad last week. Yeah, he was a number two, number six, and then number twenty seven. Um and I would play Baker. And personally. honestly, in week two Against the Lions, this is like this. That should be a, a matchup that we're excited to play Baker Mayfield in. He completed twelve passes for one hundred eighty-five yards and one touchdown. He just he ran for thirty-four yards and scored on the, the ground. The odds of Richardson giving you a big performance are almost nothing. So that's why I would play Baker. Is that Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh could make Richardson look foolish, but if Richardson has a good game, it's still not going to be the ceiling that you would get from Baker at home against the Steelers, that's why I would go that way. Yeah, okay. I, I get it. The Bengals at 0-3 take on the 1-2 Carolina Panthers in what Mike is calling his game of the week, yeah. the 1-6 combined Bengals-Panthers matchup. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Cincy minus 4 on the road, the O-Runders 47, which is the second highest total of the week. That's gross. Let me just say that is gross that 47 is the second highest of the week. We yeah. we have gone Shame down in total touchdowns, right, for three straight weeks. Correct. What if we didn't do that? Yeah, let's uh, let's score more. Well, let me tell you how we're going to score more. Andy Dalton, baby, <laughs> against the Cincinnati <laughs> Bengals. Andy Dalton has a chance to yes. end the Bengals season in 2024. I mean, as the former franchise quarterback of the Bengals. Who was, was tossed into the garbage, thrown away? I mean, this is like this is this got to mean something special to that man. It probably means something special to these Bengals def defenders as well. His passing line set that doesn't at, matter. Wait, at two, they have defenders. <laughs> the I mean, believe it or not, they have defenders. Um, it didn't look good against Washington. It looked really good the week before. So. You know, it's it. They're up against it, right? It's make or break for the Bengals. Mm -hmm. I think this is a tough one, a tough one to break down. The whole, the over is great. I mean, you could get a game like the Washington game where you get a lot of production from both sides of the football, and you love it. But um, you know, Chuba Hubbard, big week last week. Deontay Johnson, your start of the week. Andy Dalton, a streaming candidate in this one. And then keep your eyes on Xavier Leggett. Yes, because yes, I think absolutely. this is his game. I think this is the one where you should see uh, breakout potential in it. Uh, only three targets last week, but a very explosive player. You want to see the snaps go up? They should. You need to You need to stash him. Grab him on waivers right now this week. Because, yeah, no Thielen. Yeah, Thielen's on IR. This is a first-round rookie who now has a quarterback that can get him the ball. And so I, I love that call-out. I think he should be rostered. He should not be on any waivers. Zach Moss on the other side of the football. Um, probably a, a good yes, wide receiver to or running back to this yeah. week. Yeah, the, the the volume is there. His rushing line is at fifty five and a half. Fifty five. But he's and he's <laughs> like he's he's the guy. He is the guy for the Bengals. Top twenty four wide receiver the last two weeks. No, not talking about Jamar Chase and T Higgins. Talking about Andre Yoshivas, who got some good publicity from his head coach this week. Said the arrows pointing up. Five for fifty two and a touchdown last week. Two. Uh, receptions and had two touchdowns, only on seven yards. That's tough. That's Mike Evans stuff. Yeah, I'm. But uh, no, you know, would you rather stash Yoshivas or Legat? Because you Leggett, know, you know, the team is looking like the team is not keeping T Higgins, 
and T. Higgins is often hurt. So, right. like, the future number two for this team is going to be evaluated. Yeah, he'll be evaluated, but, I mean, they're they're making game plans to win, and they have to win. They're trying to make the playoffs, and they're starting 0-3. So, uh, T. Higgins is the better wide receiver and is the more important, more involved player going forward this season. I, I would rather have Xavier Leggett um, than Yoshivas as a stash. So, uh, Joe Burrow's my start of the week. At, uh, no, no, he's not. No, he's my start no, of the week, not. though. It says Andy's. Oh, don't even know who your start of the week is. Uh, Joe Burrow, good to go. Should be a fun game. A lot of fantasy-relevant players. And we'll see if Andy Dalton comes down to earth, which, look, that can happen. No. That's, that's kind of why. No, it will not. Why not he's, this week. How many How many teams has he played for since, um, since Cincinnati? I mean, you've got New Orleans, Chicago, Dallas, Carolina. So uh, it's, been, it's been since 2019 when he departed Cincinnati. It's kind of wild. So we'll see what he does at home against a desperate Bengals team I, th that generally, you know, they, they throw some stuff at the quarterback that they're not used to seeing. I do expect, like, uh, th this is one where the hope is you're going to get two bad defenses, two uh, good enough offenses where you have a barn burner and you score a ton of points. But I do expect the <laughs> Bengals – to come out here as a team on fire. They're not going to, because they're 0-3, they're not going to dismiss the Panthers and not get up for this game. This is it's a, like Baltimore last week going to, to Dallas. Exactly. I, I, the Bengals are a good team. Um, they are not, you know, they're, they're the most shocking 0-3 team to start. And so, yeah, I, I think they're going to go in here and cover this line. All right, it's time to move on. Uh, we'll cover the rest of the matchups on tomorrow's episode of the show, as long as well as our Wheel of Shame and Fantasy Faceoff. Uh, we do have our Parlay Parte, and I need uh, I need the Falcon to bring oh you some my of the gosh. freaking Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk, sixty yards, my friend. That's all you needed to do. You got ten targets. He didn't get sixty yards. Five for forty-eight. Unbelievable! Mm. Yeah, um, well, the clown, the clown uh, wig goes back on for Mike and I. Kyler Murray, two hundred and seven. Jason's back. On I'm top. the king again, baby. <laughs> so two clowns, one crown. And this week, uh, Jason hit the. Jason's got a pattern. I got a pattern, and He's it's working. He's doing the same thing every week, which is taking two out of three. I'm trying to find a running back with a busted receiving line, and so I'll hop right in with mine because I'm doing it again. Chuba Hubbard's line, it's broken. <laughs> Over two and a half receptions. That's all he needs. This is a game we just finished covering where last week he got the ball more than 20 times, including five receptions from Andy Dalton. This is a new team with Andy Dalton who is going to check down to Chuba. He just needs to get it three times. Over two and a half. That is my favorite line this week. And based on the fact this clown wig is starting to feel more and more at home in 2024, you may want to bet the opposite of mine. <laughs> <laughs> but I I don't under look the Rashad White line I had two weeks ago. You're seems, coming as a hater. Seems like a. Yeah, I I think you're right in this though. I I like this line. Well, that's why you expect a big game. But Garrett Wilson, I'm taking the under 65 and a half receiving yards. Hater. The alt line. He has not hit 65 receiving yards yet in 2024. And then you get Patrick Sertan in this game. This seems like a lock. DK Metcalf on Patrick Sertain had 29 yards. George Pickens had 29 yards. Mike Evans had 17 yards as so, far as on the the plays where Sertain was So covered. you've got to more than double those those peak numbers in order to lose this one. But uh, Wilson's actually been under this number nine of his last 11 going back to before Thanksgiving. So I really want to put the crown on. <laughs> yeah, I'll share you, it with you. you I'll went, share it with you next week. And you went to, to Hayton. Yeah. Garrett Wilson. yeah, I had to mix it up. I get it. This is our week. We're going to be three kings. Nico Collins, 70-plus receiving yards, eight targets in every game this year. C.J. Stroud is my quarterback star of the week, 80-plus yards in five straight games going back to last year for Mr. Nico Collins. It's the Jaguars. Look, they play the highest rate of man coverage in the NFL. It's not going to matter because Nico is a man, and he you cannot stop the dig route from Nico Collins. So to, the to add to this – the Jaguars' shocking lack of a pass rush. I mean, they they have all of a sudden they have no pass rush. If Stroud has time in the pocket, that's where he finds those down the field bombs. It, it's less Stephon Diggs, 
more of Nico and Tank. And then Tank is currently dealing with his own thing. Nico, yeah, Nico should Nico. easily pass 70 yards. All right, so the parlay parte, Garrett Wilson under 65 and a half receiving yards, Chuba Hubbard over two and a half receptions, and Nico Collins 70 plus. Let's be triple crown, the triple crown next week. We got that? I agree. All right, that was Fantasy Forecast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. New DraftKings customers bet $5 to get, uh, to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Download the Sportsbook app and use the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Yes, it is. All right, more matchups, fantasy face-off. Enjoy tonight's Thursday night football game. we got a couple starts of the week in that one. Jake Ferguson, Devin Singletary, enjoy yeah. the matchup. Let's get the week off on the right foot. Goodbye. Seven seven eight hope and Y or text hope and Y four six seven three six nine. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call eight 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 seven eight nine seven 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 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, twenty one and over. Age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire one hundred sixty eight hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co/ftball.